So I had to... Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. It's time for us to have a very important conversation. Without Nigeria having the statistics, the highest number of out-of-school children in the world, ranging between 10.5 million and 12.5 million, we have a group of young people who have decided to be the change that we're looking for, to be the change that we want to see. They're from Slum to School Africa, and joining us on the show today on my extreme left is the founder of Slum to School Africa, Oto Oranda. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. And on my immediate <laughs> left, we have Oluche Kubanyi. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. First of all, pleasure. thank you mm -hmm. for all that you do, okay. for all that you have done, and all that you're doing with regards to helping reduce these statistics. <laughs> They're very alarming statistics. Lena and I were having this conversation off air just before the show started. That you know, last time it was 10.5 million. We're hearing 12.5 million. We're hearing 13.5 million. These statistics are increasing now. Otto, you've been doing this for the longest time. What would you say are some of the mm. main reasons why we have these staggering statistics, the highest in the world of out-of-school children? Thanks, firstly, for having us. You know, we've been, we've been, we've been, we've been working to come over for this, for this, for I this know, program for, for, the for, for the longest time. So it's finally good, you know, to be here. And um, and um, yeah, well done for the great work you do. You know, Thank supporting you. organizations like us and putting, you know, the limelight on us. Um, your question is actually one that bothers us so much, and that's the reason why we even started doing this in the first place. You know. Nigeria, apparently, we know that these statistics have been here for a very long time. In fact, the 10.5 million out of school children was a UNESCO statistics in 2010. You know, and 2010, things seem to have been very stable, very okay. That was when we, we were about 10 years into the, into the MDGs. You know, and a little, to, put, to put that in context, in, in, when, when the MDGs started, that was in the year 2000, Nigeria had about 3 million out of school children from statistics as well. While India, with over a billion population, had about 10 point something million out of school children, almost 11. You know, and 10 years after, by 2010, India had about 1 billion, while Nigeria had about 10.5. And so you can imagine in 2010 with 10.5 million out of school children as, 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 as statistics, and these are real children, these are not just statistical figures. That was, at that point, we hadn't even had issues in the, in the Northeast where we had all the insurgency and, and children had to drop out of school and all of that. So we can imagine what it is. And, and it's pretty much very apparent seeing the situations on the streets, driving across the road and you find all the children on the street, you know, hawking. And a major, a major you know, um, the, the majority of most of these kids are found in hard to reach communities, underdeveloped communities, slums. You know, some of the communities where we work in, you find children in their thousands who are not having access to education, and beyond even the children who are, not in, who are not yet in school, are those who are in school but are not learning. Because we have also another issue with the quality of education, the curriculum, the teachers, and all of those issues. So it basically just means that we need to realize very early that we have an Ebola in the education system. Mm. You know, until we, until we realize how threatening this is, I think that's when we can start making progress. Because We've said for the longest time that we need to call for a state of emergency in the education sector. I think even the Honorable Minister for, for Education said that sometime in April. But it's, it's beyond just a lip service. We need to realize that a whole lot of action needs to be take, taken if we want to have a developed you know, society and a sustainable future for, 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 the, for, for the nation. And thankfully, we have organizations like yours, Slum to School, that are working towards this. Now, in 2015, we went further to adopt the SDGs, and you're basically focusing on Global Goal 4, four. of quality education. So, two questions, one for Luchu Kubange and one for you, Otto. Where is Nigeria now? Where does Nigeria need to be? How do we also get there by 2030? Okay, so quickly, I'll, 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 I'll say that, first of all, we need to have a clear vision for where we want to be as a nation. You know, it's beyond just saying we need to pursue the, the SDGs because the entire world, the United Nations, you know, has come together to put these goals in place. We need, first of all, to even decide <coughs> what we want as a nation. A national interest. Yeah, so what is the vision for our nation? Without a vision, we're just walking, you know, walking in the dark. We are, we are, we are winking in the dark because... You know, a vision is not, some, some, some elites might say that we have a vision. Some, 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 some people in government can also say we have a vision. But a vision is not what is written on paper. It's what is embedded in our hearts. The market woman at Ajota needs to understand what that vision is. You know, it's, I wouldn't even call it a Nigerian dream. It's more like a vision. And clear, putting it in, in context, it's like saying you want to go to Ijebu Ode this, this afternoon. You're going to get 
to a park and take a bus or take a, 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 a motor vehicle. You wouldn't go to the international airport to get a flight because you know where you're going to. If you want to go to China, you get to the international airport, you wouldn't take a vehicle. You know, so the vehicle we need is it's, 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 it's going to be determined by the vision of our nation, where we are headed as a nation. You know, and so that can only be determined when we have a collective direction, which we do not have right now. And so when we do not have that clear vision, it's even difficult for us to even ask ourselves, what kind of education do we want? What quality of education do we want? You know, are we going with this kind? And, and, and these days we have all kinds of education from the Montessori to the British to the UK to almost all schools have a different curriculum. But is this in a national interest? Is, is, is it taking us in the direction where we want to be as a nation? So by the time we, 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 we can have those clear decisions taken, before we can then start realizing the, 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 the strategies we want to use to, 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 to achieve these this goals. It's beyond just you know, having some figures in the air. It's coming down to have practical steps that will help us achieve these things. I want you quite and, a follow up to that. I, I'd also like, while you're answering, to add, you know, talking about Slum to School Africa and how you're able to achieve what you've achieved so far with regards to sending children to school. You know, I'm sure you'd give us figures of how, how much you've done so far. Yeah. But how are you able to fund yourself? And is the government a part of this at all? All right, so th thanks for that question. Um, so, yes, starting from the, the back, um, yes, we partner with uh, government at different levels. Um, even for us to even have the opportunity to set up um, where we've set up and even thinking about expanding to other states, definitely um, we are definitely part of a system that um, uh, we're a legal entity. Okay, so registered and we have the government support. Uh, some of our projects which we execute, you know, one I can speak of, um, you know, is uh, we have a computer library in, our, in the school in Makoko, you know, and that uh, was achieved with the help of the Lagos State, uh, Lagos State government. Okay, so um, so yes, in, in our day to day, we have we have a lot of um, government support, you know. But when we look at the bigger picture, you know, for education and what we want education, where we want education to take us as a nation, you know, then you have to start thinking about, you know, what is the focus, um, because the SDG four quality education it actually does speak to the human capital, you know, developing the human capital for the country, uh, for whichever country, uh, because you realize that without the human capital being developed or to a certain minimum standard, you know, then you definitely will be lagging behind uh, in the committee of, of, of nations. Whatever goal it is you want to achieve, you know, it means you might either have to start borrowing that capital from outside. I remember, you know, even if you're borrowing capital from outside, the people coming in to help, they are not necessarily interested in, in you, okay? They have their own objectives, okay? And to a large extent, the objective might be profit-driven, okay? But for the country, you have, to, you have to empower those people, you know, the kids, everybody, to develop the human capital to a level where we can sustain, sustain ourselves, mm -hmm. okay? So what we're doing some to school is, um, is part of being, just being part of the solution, okay? To date, we've seen uh, with our educational support scholarships, we've had over 1,000-plus beneficiaries come through the system, okay? You look at 1,000-plus in Makoko and other communities we've been able to impact, um, mainly in Lagos, okay? So we have, um, we have uh, Makoko, we have Ekpe, we have Takwa Bay. Um, we're looking at expanding into other states, hopefully within the next year, okay? But, you know, these numbers, there's, there's only so much we can do. And um, looking at the, the size of the problem, you know, definitely um, we need a lot more hands, hands on deck. Uh, but one thing we, we keep telling ourselves is we keep, uh, keep doing what we're doing, um, we have our model, the model which we, uh, we operate, and we know that this model is going to the point where we can just take it and plug and play in, a, in another part of the country. Okay? okay. Yeah. But how do, you, how do you also ensure the quality of education that children you're putting into school are getting? Because I recall about two months ago sitting on Takwa Bay with a nine-year-old boy, and he was given a book, and it was a book for four to five-year-olds, and I said to him, that he should read me the first page of the book, and he couldn't read it at the age of nine. Very simple words. So I saw a direct problem there, and I was like, whoa, he is not getting any quality education, regardless of how many hours he's spending in the classroom every day. So it's one thing to take children off the streets and put them into school, but how do you then ensure the quality of education that these children are getting? Yeah, it's so just to, you know, uh, particularly from where Baye had, had, had stopped. I think it's extremely, you know, 
important for us to also realize that, like we mentioned earlier on, mm. you know, when, when, when we look at the, cr the crisis in the education sector, for me, there are four major things. One is the vision, like I mentioned earlier on, having a clear vision that gives us clear direction. You know, secondly, for me, would be the policy decisions that are being taken. You know, thirdly, would be quality and relevance. And finally, would be access, you know, and equity. And a whole lot of other issues will be, can be broken down into these four categories. So quality is extremely important. Um, we've in, and and this, 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 re, this reality is across the country. We, we know the issues with the, with the quality of education. Aside the curriculum, aside the infrastructure, the teachers. You know, what's the quality of teachers that we have? So are you able to monitor the quality of education, the quality of teachers, you know, in the schools? So in our own case, what we realize is there are a number of schools we adopted. Like Baye has said, well, one of the things we do, and when he speaks about the support from the government, we've realized, and I think there's this ideology or I would say perception out there that it's we against the government, you know, and that makes people see the government as an evil space to operate. But we need to all realize that people in government are also people like us. And at some point, we need to understand that we are also government. So collaborations are very important for us, and collaborating with the government is extremely important. So what we do in several, several states, and at the moment, like Maya said, we are moving into Borno, Abuja, Port Harcourt, Ibadan. Um, and we have our teams already in all those regions, volunteers working on several projects. Like, like the, the, the campaign we have going on now where we plan to enroll more children in all of these communities, about 18 communities across the country. And in some of the schools where we work, we realized that one of the issues was not just having the kids come into school, but improving the quality of education. And so we partnered with the government in several ways to bring in teachers to fill the gap. Because we understood that in several cases, those teachers were not, the, the capacity was not there. And in some other cases, the quality wasn't there. So we have to do things like teacher trainings. We have to bring in more teachers to take some classes. I'll, I'll give an example of a school where we, we, we had just four teachers in the entire school. You know, I wouldn't mention the states. But we had just four teachers in the entire school. And, 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 and one teacher was taking a primary one and primary two. And that teacher was teaching primary three and primary four. And this teacher was teaching primary five and primary six. And these are realities. You know. And so what we had to do in our own little way as an organization was to bring in three more teachers you know, to support. And these are realities across several schools. And it just means we need to realize that it's urgent. It's, just, you know, it's not just a responsibility of the government. Even the private sector needs to realize that our corporate social responsibilities need to be focused on you know, on productivity and yeah. not just activity. Apparently, Otto, we will not be able to, you know, ask all, we definitely have to have a part <laughs> two of this conversation because we need to go in depth into what Slum to School does. How many children have you been able to send to school so far? Do you have? Um, yeah, about 1,100. Wow, really? yeah. congratulations. Yeah. That's, that's really good. Well, yeah. our impact across several programs has reached about 32,000. Wow. You know, so, and, and the, 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 the major impact is being, is being created by volunteers, which we've had over 8,000 from 32 countries since we started. So we are primarily a volunteer-driven organization that's, that's, you know, that's, that, that's, that focuses on, on ensuring that every child is given an opportunity to be their best. And young people like us are the ones who drive all of this. Okay. Amazing. So well, how can people get involved if they do want to volunteer and help out with Slum to School? I think the, the, fast, the, the easiest way to get involved right now is the campaign we have, which is um, 8,000 Dreams. You can just use the hashtag you know, on any social media platform, 8,000 Dreams. What we're trying to do is to get 1,000 new children into school this year. And that's in Lagos, about four, 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 four different regions of Lagos. And I'm sure yeah. you have a lot more information about this on social media as of well, course. right? Of course, just follow yeah. our handles right. at Slum yeah. to School very, on every platform. Very quick, we're, we're out of time now, mm. but when, if people want to contribute, because we know you're the team lead, the finance team lead, yeah. if people want to contribute Wondering. financially, how can they be involved as well, very quickly? All right, so uh, we have, uh, if you go to our, you can go to our website and uh, you navigate the website to the donate link. Uh, so once you get to the donate link, you'll see all the, um, all the payment options, you know, so through those payment options, you can, you know, make a donation, then you fill a form so we can uh, track, try to track the, uh, the donor. And uh, lots of people are usually very mm -hmm. worried about giving to NGOs because they're thinking, how can I track my money? So is there some sort of system that allows clarity for people to be able to see how money is being spent? Yeah, of course. So we have reports that are being, yeah. you know, published. On our website, you can find those reports as well. But beyond even the reports, we give every single person an opportunity to come and get involved. 
be part of the, 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 the work we do so you can get a seat okay. In, in, in clarity what your money is actually being used for. Okay, and final one in just 10 seconds. Out of the projects or the campaign, A Thousand Dreams, how many children have you sent to school so far in Lagos State? How many children have we been able to been raise able to, funds yes, for? Yes, to funds send from. to school. Yeah, so, so even on our website, we have a fundraising tracker that, sh that, they can, that shows our volunteers and our stakeholders how much is being raised by the minute, by the second is on, on the line. And at the moment, I think since the campaign started two weeks ago, we've raised funds for about, for about 142 children. Wow. Wow. Yeah, we still have about 800 yeah. and, yeah, and to, to go. go. And so you will get there. We will. And you will get there. Get there. Get there. Well. Absolutely. Yeah. Bye, how can we follow you on social media, individually and collectively? Yeah, so that will be, uh, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter. and the, Facebook, LinkedIn. Yeah, we're everywhere. on all the, all the platforms. And that's Slum to School. Is it 2T or, or number two? Number two. Number two. All right, so number at Slum to, to school, school Africa. Africa. Slum to school. Okay. Slum to school. Yeah, we are. Slum to, slum to school. school. Yeah, well, just Google. You find a whole lot of things about it. Brilliant. Us and, and get involved. Get involved. It costs 50,000 naira for a child for a whole year. And that covers a whole lot of things. Okay. Right. A whole lot of things. Thank you so much, thank you Otto. So much. Thank you so much, Mary. Right, this has you. been absolutely extremely insightful. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.